Let's begin by saying that Thai productions really know how to make the horror genre to the extreme. Case in point, the newly released horror anthology, Terror Tuesday Extreme. Netflix has been dropping some spine-tinglingly spooky anthologies, and this Thai series is the latest addition to the directory. Terror Tuesday Extreme consists of eight standalone episodes, each exploring different supernatural forces. From a cursed bridal dress to a haunted doll, a vengeful goddess, and a resurrected grandmother, each story is more sinister than the last. This raises the question, can the dead really be brought back to life? To find out, we'll dive into the episode titled Dear Granny in this video. Be warned, there are major spoilers ahead. So duck under your sheets and grab some holy water, because you're about to encounter some extreme occult forces soon. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Overview of Terror Tuesday, Extreme, and Dear Granny Now, before we talk about the seventh episode, here's a roundup of the overall premise of the show. Terror Tuesday Extreme is based on the popular Thai radio program Ankan Klumpong, which translates to the Terror Tuesday phrase, and it airs on the EFM 94 radio channel. On the show, callers share their real-life horror stories with the host. The Netflix anthology is based on these true experiences, with each of the eight episodes directed by a different filmmaker, all set in dark, brooding atmospheres. Now, the show may heighten the horror in these real-life stories, but they're still based on true events. A few minutes into the first episode reveals how ominous the stories are, which are rounded off with a final terrifying episode, with the radio program Ang Kang Klumpong playing in the backdrop. The anthology kicks off with the first episode, Our Little Sister, and continues with the individual stories, Wedding Dress, Ode to My Family, The Vow, Spectral Class, Girl Next Door, and Dear Granny, and wraps up with the Viral Curse episode, where a spooky radio program story starts turning into reality for a mother-daughter duo. As we told you, we'll be exploring the Dear Granny episode, whose premise is that when a missing grandmother suddenly returns home following a binding ritual, her family begins to encounter signs that she's not the granny they knew. Here's what happens. The episode begins with a woman named Mantha, reasoning with her aged mom that they do not have eels to perform a freeing ritual. That is, releasing the fish in river water during an auspicious time, and instead they have a bunch of other fish to perform the ritual. Mantha gets frustrated and turns away to take a call. She misses a splashing noise in the background, and when she turns around, her mother's gone with just her pair of shoes remaining behind on the pier. Mantha returns home late at night, only to be rebuked by her daughter Nulik, who grew up under the care of her grandmother, and despises the career-driven Mantha for neglecting her as a child. Concerned about her granny, Nulik throws a bowl at her mother, which hits the wall. Soon after, Nulik's friend Alex texts her and suggests that maybe the grandmother is hiding somewhere, as she loves to play hide-and-seek with Nulik. Meanwhile, Nulik is also disturbed by the presence of a creepy stalker of a neighbor, who's always peeping into their home. When the police have no updates on her missing mother, Mantha takes her mom's shoes to a shaman, who tells Mantha that Granny is still around, but a ghost is blocking her sight, so she can't find her way back home. Mantha is advised to perform a binding ritual by tying the shoes together and keeping them on Granny's bed, and promised that Granny would return home in three days' time. Nothing happens on day one and day two, and Nulik and her friend Alice mock Mantha's attempt to bring Granny back. When Nulik suddenly sees muddy footsteps on the front porch, and Mantha tells her that the grandmother has returned. Instead of being happy about her grandmother's return, Nulik appears somewhat concerned. Next morning, just to ensure she wasn't dreaming, Nulik visits her grandma's room and hears a knocking noise. She sees an upside down bowl hovering under the bed on its own. When Nulik touches it, a tiny eel-like creature crawls out of it on her arm. She also sees the psycho neighbor peeping at her at the same time, and rushes back into her room and hides under the sheets. When she turns around, Nulik sees a ghostly decaying figure with lifeless eyes staring at her. It crawls under the sheets with a raspy, creepy laugh. When Nulik removes the covers, it turns out to be Granny, and they embrace. She then sings a lullaby to calm down Nulik, who tells her how much she'd missed her Granny and would never want to let her go. Meanwhile, Mantha gets a call from the police and rushes out to a location by the water, where the cops have discovered Granny's bloated and decaying corpse with blood oozing out of her nose and eyes. Mantha learns that her mother died days ago by drowning after accidentally falling into the water. Mantha realizes that the figure back home isn't her mother, but some evil spirit, and rushes back home, fearing Nulik is in danger. Back home, Granny's affectionate, caressing hands suddenly grab onto Nulik's throat and starts telling her, come and be with me. In the walls of the room, Nulik sees the shadow of her grandmother change into an almost headless entity, which rises up over her and vomits a bunch of eels on her. 
As Nulek flees from its clutches, the demon turns into Grandma again, and forces Nulek to play a game of hide and seek, just like the real Granny and Nulek used to play. But this time, Scary Granny lays out different rules. Each time Nulek gets caught, Granny will cut off her ears, nose, and then finally slice her throat. The first round ends with the evil spirit tracking down Nulek in the kitchen cabinets and chopping off her right ear. In the second round, Nulik locks herself in the washroom and escapes through a small window, gashing herself severely by the broken glass bits. She's chased down by the shape-shifting evil through the neighborhood, when a speeding car hits her and drags her away. Now comes the most bizarre and confusing part of the story. It's revealed to be Mantha's car, who is rushing back home to warn her daughter. Mantha walks out of the car, and the camera focuses on a pair of Nulik's shoes tied together, instead of focusing on what happened to Nulik. The twist ending. Following Nulik's accident and Mantha picking up her tied shoes, the story goes into flashback, all the way to the night of Granny's disappearance. Earlier we saw that night, a frustrated Nulik had thrown a bowl at her mother, but this time in the flashback, we see that an invisible force smashes the bowl at the wall. Nulik is not visible, and the scene changes to this creepy psycho neighbor recording the happenings on his camera and saying, there's something going on in this haunted house again. He isn't really a psycho, as portrayed by Nulek earlier, but this guy's actually a paranormal investigative streamer, who records some creepy revelations about Mantha's house. He says Mantha lives alone there. Some time back, the daughter Nulek ran away from the house after a fight with her mom. While running away, she got hit and killed by a car. During the recording, his screen goes dark and the reflections of Nulek and the monster granny's bloody, decaying face appear on the screen. As you can guess, the streamer dies a gruesome death as the two evil spirits slit his throat, while remaining invisible. Dear Granny has the most ambiguous ending of all the episodes. It doesn't offer any explanation about Nulik and Mantha's backstories, and leaves the ending open to interpretation. If we're to rack our brains, the ending can be untangled a few ways. First, we know that Nulik always despised her mother and blamed her for her father's absence in their lives, which influenced Nulik's decision to run away following which she got killed in a car accident. The scene that shows Mantha picking up Nulik's shoes after the accident suggests that Mantha had previously performed the binding ritual to bring back her daughter, and she's been living with the spirit of Nulik. And it's possible that the hatred and the unnatural death turned Nulik into a disgruntled spirit, who probably has been killing animals all this while. Hence, we saw all the missing pet animal posters across town. The streamer reveals there's no grandmother as well in the house so the granny may have also been long dead. And when Nulik's spirit living in the house misses granny a bit too much, Mantha decides to bring her back from the dead. However, instead of welcoming granny, Mantha accidentally brought in an evil entity into her house. This brings us to the second part of the explanation. Nulik's spirit living in Mantha's house may have been bitter, but was not outrightly evil. And when the malevolent demon in granny's disguise entered the house, it influenced Nulik to become murderously sinister. It tortured the spirit of Nulik with the hide and seek game, till Nulik was completely broken and turned to the dark side. Moreover, in the scene when Granny returns, Nulik, or the spirit of Nulik, doesn't seem at all happy to see her grandma return, which suggests that she could sense that this Granny is a demon. The Ritual's Role While the shaman tells Mantha a way to help Granny find her way back through the binding ritual, she also warns Mantha that she will have to pay a terrible price. As per the shaman, an evil spirit is blocking Granny's way back home and preventing her from connecting with her loved ones. The shaman says that Granny is particularly worried sick about Nulik, but because of her forgetful nature, she's stuck. Mantha must plead to the four heavenly gods and perform the feet tying ritual to lead her back home. The ritual involves tying together a pair of shoes Granny frequently wears with sacred threads, along with a photo of Granny attached to them, and then think hard about Granny while carrying those shoes. The most crucial part of the ritual comes with a warning, and we'd like to repeat the shaman's exact words here. On your way home, think only of her. Don't get distracted. Otherwise, you'll lead something else home instead. It basically means that if Mantha has any negative thoughts, she will attract sinister forces into her home instead of Granny, which is such an ominous prediction, and that's exactly what happened with Mantha next. Malevolent Shapeshifter Demon Explained The malevolent entity reveals itself to Nulek for the first time when Mantha is out at work. It appears to be a shape-shifting demon which can take the form of Granny. That's how it made its way into Mantha's house. As a shape-shifting evil entity, it can also appear as Granny's decaying corpse, with lifeless eyes and blood oozing out of its mouth. That's how it terrorizes Nulik and gives the viewers major jump scares. While holding Nulik on its lap, the shape-shifting demon also creepily extended its neck and gurgled out eels on Nulik, which later disappeared. This time, the demon shape-shifted into a decomposed version of Granny, with its face completely distorted and eyes being replaced with empty holes. The subsequent disappearance of the eels also suggests that this nefarious demon is capable of generating deathly hallucinations for its victims. 
It's also pretty cunning, because when Mantha suggested that Granny go for a health checkup following her return, the entity refused to go, citing knee pain. Also, while playing hide and seek with Nulik, the shapeshifter miscounted a few numbers, to give Nulik less time to hide. But somehow, it knew the lullaby that Granny would sing to put Nulik to bed. After revealing itself to Nulik, the demon speaks in a blood-curdling distorted voice, and it's powerful enough to shut the doors and windows to prevent Nulik from escaping. The demon also snuck up on Nulik inside the kitchen cabinet, suggesting it can appear wherever it pleases. Toward the end, the demon shapeshifts into a grotesque version of Granny and chases Nulik across the street. This malevolent entity also has the power of invisibility, as it hovers over the streamer guy's shoulders but is never seen on camera. Both Nulik and the shapeshifting demon simply appear as reflections on the computer screen. P.S. We also spotted a bunch of missing pet posters in the town, suggesting that the demon may have been haunting the town for a while. Marvelous Verdict Before wrapping up the video, let's give you a summed up version of the storyline. Mantha lost both her daughter, Nulik, and her mother, the Granny, sometime in the past. She summoned Nulik's spirit with the feet tying ritual first, and when Nulik's spirit got frustrated living alone in the house, Mantha summoned Granny as well. But the shape-shifting demon appeared instead of Granny and corrupted Nulik's spirit into an evil entity. Like we said, Dear Granny gets a bit confusing toward the end, but more than makes up for it with its old-school, jump-scary, blood-soaked horror. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this episode, so please share your theories on what you think may have been going on at Mantha's haunted house. Thanks for watching, see you super soon! And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe! Thanks everyone!